afternoon talk on SAFM. Right, so uh, Natalie Dutoy is my guest now in the spotlight for the next uh, 45 minutes before we get to Radio Vuka. So you know the story. If you want to say hi to her, uh, do that by calling into 0891 SMS is 3471. You can tweet to me, Ashraf Garda 1. Uh, use the hashtag afternoon talk. And uh, you can also comment on uh, on my Facebook page as well, amongst the many ways that you can do just that. Uh, your suggestions, who else we need to be putting in the spotlight, you tell me. Before I get to Natalie, I did tell, give you the number of the guys about uh, the recycling week. So it's Impo, uh, Impo, and it's uh, his number is 084-862-3219, 084-862-3219. His email address is Impo, it's spelled e- uh, M-P-H-O, um, and then uh, J at... J A H M Y J A H M Y so Jami dot C O dot Z A. But that's uh, another story for another time. Now certainly we have in the studio Natalie Detroit, who's uh, goodness. How often do people say you like amongst the most celebrated people in the country? Because you know that, don't you? <laughs> Well, I think for me, it's it's not just about that. I think it's about going for goals and dreams and and going you know through life the way I'd like to go through life and. I think um, you know at the moment I'm sort of stuck in a in a what would you call it a place in a hard rock. Mm, um, mm. You're, you're unemployed, aren't you? I'm, I've been unemployed for about two days now. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> what, what does it feel like being unemployed? I think it's a bit crazy because I've just been doing a bit, quite a lot of media and quite a lot of uh, you know I'm still in the limelight, so it's, it's been a bit different. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes for the next couple of weeks. Mm. I mean, you, you made the point that you you've retired and you will retire at 28. Um, and and you want to obviously pick up on the things that you, you didn't do when you got into swimming, right? But you do know, I mean, you, there, there's got to be a plan because you are a brand. There's got to be a plan that you want to leverage all the things that you've done. It can't be sort of retiring but stepping out of the limelight. It's got to be retiring but making sure that your name then can buy you other things, isn't it? Well, I think it's quite a difficult topic because I haven't really decided what I want to do yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's quite scary. Um you know, going out of swimming, swimming's everything I've known. Yes, it created a brand and the brand was values and, and um, basically going out there and, you know, dreams, goals, um, that type of thing. So hopefully I'll be able to keep that up. Um, I have absolutely no idea what I want to achieve, but I think <laughs> it will be important to, to make a success or try and make a success of something in the future. But you're also not under pressure to <laughs> to make a decision. No, not at all. I think what's I've been very, very lucky in that with um, with Vital and General Motors. You know, they've allowed me to, or they're going to allow me to work for the company and and be an ambassador as well for the so next that, year. So that's General Motors and Vital. Okay. They've been sponsors for for four to eight years, um, and I think from that perspective, they've been fabulous. And you know, creating an ambassador out of that and then going to work for the company, I think, is is quite fantastic and giving me an opportunity to think about what I want to do one day, study if I needed to. And, um, you know, a little bit of income as well that you don't have to worry too much mm-hmm. about it. So, so you would be effectively the ambassador. So if I need to buy these sort of vital products and I need to sort of connect with you. <laughs> well, no, I think in the last four years, um, you know, with all the advertisements and that, um, I should, you know, people do see me as an ambassador for vital. So this time it'll be more working actually within the company and working um, you know, not as the ambassadorial role, but but actually working with, for example, sales or PR or marketing or something along those lines. So, so yeah, we'll have to see. Okay, I'm going to leave it to, to others to talk to you about some of the other issues. Uh, if if people want to pick up on, there's so many things they want to ask you. I know that. Oh eight nine one one zero four two zero seven. Natalie Dutoy in the in the spotlight. L- let's let's talk about um, some of the things we don't know about you. I mean, there's so much that that we know that's documented you know everybody know you lost your leg and you could have made the olympic team and you actually did make the olympic team etc etc and did the paralympic thing but what are the things we don't know about you that, that you'd love to share well i think oh sure should we go through things sport <laughs> things first well whatever whatever you think is important <laughs> yeah. no i think there's there's lots of people i think don't realize and and one of the most important i'd like to just say to everybody is that you know, life isn't always about being positive. You know, I've had a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Mm-hmm. I think mostly downs, but it's how you get through them. And, um, you know, my team's allowed me to get through them. So that's been something that's very, very important for people out there to remember. You don't just become the champion. You've got a lot of hard work that you have to go through. Um, furthermore, I think, you know, a lot of people think I'm this crazy healthy person because mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a sports person and you can't do things. I've also, I don't do things because I chose to. Um, and you know, be it drinking, be it smoking, that was my choice, and it wasn't really to do with swimming or sport or mm, anything mm, like that. Mm, mm. Um, what else? 
I have two boxes. <laughs> dogs. As, in, as in dogs. Okay. <laughs> dogs. Mm. Um, not, not underwear, no. Mm. Um, <laughs> two boxes as in, as in dogs. <laughs> um, and I love animals. I love, I love dogs, um, especially boxes, obviously. And then um, one of them is actually as old as, as my, my career from when I had my accident. Really? And, um, mm. So she's kind of a reminder of how far we've come as well. So that's something quite special. Sure. What else do I like? Um, I think a lot of people think I'm very outgoing. Um, I'm not very outgoing at all. I'm actually Is quite shy. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the one thing you misunderstood. Yeah, I think mm. I think yes. You know, um, are you quite shy? I, I first heard I first <laughs> heard you uh, talking at a, at a function. Goodness, about maybe four years ago. I think yourself and Hashim Amla were talking, by the way, uh, together with Pat Pillay, talking about the power of the mind. There's something along that line. And even then, you were you were so incredibly impressive. I and mean, then, of course, I've had the privilege of meeting up and chatting to you on, on many occasions. How you know? There is a sense that that you're super that you're super positive and super confident, but are, are you going to tell me that actually you do get depressed? <laughs> I often think that it's it's not really depression, but I think it's you know you go through bad patches, and and obviously what what's tough for me is that a lot of things I can't control. A lot of things are people out there. Say for instance, you qualify for an event, mm -hmm. and someone can turn around and say to you, uh, "You're not going." Um, for me, that's tough. For me, that's saying, you know, there's there's different standards and, and that's been very tough. And obviously, mentally, you know, I am very down. Um, I actually wanted to give up swimming about four months ago. Is that what happened I, because of the, the Olympic Games, right? Uh, there's a, there's yeah. a lot that happened. Yeah. There's a lot of a political story around it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, qualifying for Olympics, you know, I placed 32nd after I wasn't top mm -hmm. nine. I completely gave up um, within the race. And I mean, you can see it within the race. And I think there was, I would have loved to have been there, but I think coming 32nd, I'm glad I wasn't there. Um, and I think from that perspective, you know, you achieve gold medals, you come 32nd, it's the best I could do on the day. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective, you know, it's about trying to come back from, from negative, trying to come back from um, thinking you're nothing, from thinking that, you know, you're the, you've, you haven't some worse than this ever in your entire life. And it's about growing mm. from that. And, and I've always so believed... So how do you do that? Because you see that the trouble with, with you is that, that, <laughs> that, that you're a champion. You know, there's an expectation of you that you must deliver all the time. And, yeah, and you, you know, know when, when you get those really bad days, how do you then pick it up yourself? I've been very fortunate in that, um, you know, a brand is, is, has become my values. But from that, I think it's been important that I've had a team. And that teamwork is what keeps me going and what keeps me through, even if it's... Uh, you know, making a, putting down a bet or, you know, um, promising someone that I'll do something. Um, to me, those are important. And so I will finish the story. I will finish whatever it is I need to do because I've made a promise. And that's how I work. And um, I think from that perspective, I've been very fortunate that my team also believes in what I believe in. And we go out there and we do everything in, in our power to achieve it. And, you know, saying that, it's not an I, but it's a we. And with the we, we all get hurt in the same space mm, and time. Mm, so mm. from that perspective, we're always working together. And, and so I must admit, I could never have done it on my own. Who's your, who's your team? And Rita's outside. Is she part of your team? And who, <laughs> who else is there? <laughs> uh, definitely, I think, um, you know, it's the sponsors, my personal sponsors that have believed in me, those people that have been there for many years. Um, Anarita, family. Um, and I think from that perspective, it is a small handful, but it's it's something that was very important and something that, you know, you, you grow with and, and you get to know and they keep you going and they, they find ways to keep you positive and, um, you know, to keep you upbeat. Mm. So you've come to the end of the career. Um, <laughs> re regrets that, that you've had? Not that, you know, sort of unfinished business? Not at all. You know, I was a little girl when I decided that I would be, I would finish when I'm 28. Um, I always said that if I qualify for the Olympics or if I don't, 28 would be the age I would stop. And, you know, I didn't know it would, the Paralympics, the Olympics would be in London at that stage. Mm -hmm. And I think from that perspective, I'm done. I've achieved the Olympics. I've achieved the gold medals. There's nothing more for me to achieve. Um, also, a lot of the politics that happened, I'm glad to be out of the sport and glad to have retired and, and move on. And I think it's time to so start a new chapter. You, you, you love the sport, but you don't like the politics and exactly. you, you couldn't take it exactly. one day later, one day longer. Exactly. I think, you know, I've been fighting every day to go to the swimming pool and, and competing. And, you know, it's something that because of the promise I made and because of the sport we've had from South Africa, it's been tremendous. Mm. And um, it was difficult, you know, to try and get through all of that. Um, and yeah, you know, I walk away, I think a lot of relief now that I've walked away, 
um, you know, it's it's only been two days, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see as the as the weeks go on. But you know, I, at the moment, I just want to divorce myself from the sport and and find something okay. else. Find so something. before you do, we are chatting to Natalie Dutoni. If you want to say hi to her, oh eight nine one one zero four two zero seven. Uh, I mean, g- give us an insight into the politics so that we understand it. <laughs> I think it's 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 very difficult. I'm actually not allowed to speak about them. Obviously, we've signed a contract, and you know the whole story isn't about the politics. It's about at the end of the day, I don't want anybody else to have to go through what I've been through. And um, you know, it's been a tough road. And to tell you the honest truth, I think you know for for me, I'm grateful that I'm not there anymore. Um, I I think we've achieved a lot. Um, once the story does come out, you'll see that we've actually achieved more than than just gold medals. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, from that perspective, it's a positive story. And I think that's what, what people out there need to take from it. And, and when is this going to come out? <laughs> I have no idea. Because uh, you say with certainty when it does come out. <laughs> yes, I think, you know, as I said, it's, it's not about the negative part about mm-hmm. it. We've been through a lot of hardships, but it's to say that this is where we are today. Through all of that, it is possible. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's just another way of saying that, that dreams and goals are possible if you if you really put your mind to it and put the hard work in. Indeed. Well, you certainly have put in uh, lots of hard work. I want to pick out some of the call before I get to, to your story in terms of where it all started. And it started uh, not just in the pool, but an accident, isn't that sort of changed your own destiny? Uh, Adeline, I hope I've got that right on the Western Cape. Let's get to you. need to get those headphones on, there, Natalie. Uh, Adeline, hi. Hello. Yes, hi, you're on the air. Oh, hello, it's Evelyn, E-V-E-L-Y-N. Oh, it's Evelyn, my apologies, it's spelling area. Okay, go for okay. it. Okay, <laughs> that's probably because I can't speak clearly. Um, I just wanted to say that I have first noticed Natalie at the Africa Games, a rather chunky little girl with fierce determination. And uh, the day she had her accident, my son phoned me and said, um, Natalie's lost her leg. And I felt it personally. And I just couldn't believe how she has overcome what she has and how she's always remained absolutely uh, above all the politics, above everything, all the um, disability that she's had to put up with, not just physical, everything. And she's, uh, she's just my favorite sportswoman probably in the world. Okay, lovely. You, you want to just uh, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that call, Evelyn. Uh, respond to that. Yeah, I think. Thank you very much. I think it's always touching to hear stories that from people that that like Evelyn who pick up on a story. Um, you know, it, it's been tough, and I think what makes maybe makes it a little easier for me is that every day I live with a disability. Every mm, day mm. I have a prosthetic leg, but I still have to wake up in the morning and I still forget that my leg isn't there. Um, I still have problems with, you know, with the rashes on my stump or, mm, or things mm. like that. So I deal with it on a on a ba- daily basis. And I think, you know, it's it's the acceptance that th- this is who I am. And I've got to go out there and, and make the best of it. And, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason. I wouldn't have met the people that I've met. I wouldn't have, I don't believe I would have been here if I hadn't have had my accident. So Indeed. sometimes, mm. you know, you say thank you. And, and sometimes, you know, yes, you're down, but you've got to get through it and, and remember the positives out okay. of all of it. I want to certainly pick up on, on the moments when you knew you'd lost a leg and what it mattered to you, or how it, what it meant to you. In fact, let's just pick out uh, another call. Angela from, from Ladysmith this time. Hi, Angela. Hello. Yes, Angela. Hi. Hello. I just want to tell Natalie that she's absolutely fabulous. I'm a 67-year-old granny that's mad about swimming, and I've followed her career since she was a baby. And I hear her adverts on the on the radio where they say Natalie the toy wouldn't have been what she is today, and then she cries. And Natalie, you go. You're going to make such a success of your life. You're a lovely girl. You you just radiate goodness. You radiate everything. And everybody I know knows you. If I just say, oh, Natalie's swimming tonight, I have to sit <laughs> up and watch. Everybody knows you. Yes, you yes. just go, girl, go. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you, Angela. Okay, okay, lovely. Bye. Lovely. Bye. Another li- nice call indeed, yeah. Uh, I just want to pick out some of the SMSs. Natalie, you are a real hero. I started a youth NGO uh, using sports. Let me just pick that up. Um, and I hope that your sponsors will allow you to visit our youth. Uh, that comes from... Uh, I think it's from Harvey uh, or Gavin, maybe. All right. Uh, so they want somebody wants to invite you. Uh, we'll find out how they can do that. So Natalie, how did you feel when it was initially announced that the Paralympians were to receive only half the money the Olympic medalists received? I have a funny feeling you were one of those people who argued about it. I don't know. I'm fishing. You tell me. 
<laughs> I think no, not at all. You know, it's it's something that I think a, a money incentive is something that we've never really had. So the more it comes into the sport, I think the more fantastic it is. Um, and yes, of course, you know, you're a bit disappointed that, that you know, you don't get the same amount as the mm, able-bodied mm, athletes. Mm. And I think it wasn't really the money. I think for me, it was more the fact that, you know, the reason behind it was that it was easier for us to win a gold medal due to the number of people at mm, the mm, Paralympics. Mm, 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 mm. And I mean, I had to be top two in the world to create a spot for my country um, at the World Championships. So I had to be top two, whereas the able-bodied athletes were had to be in the top eight. So it's the eighth fastest time in the world okay. is the qualifying mm. time. So from that perspective, I think as a disabled athlete, you kind of look at it and you go, you know, are we really that much is it really that much easier to qualify you know our our minister and, and in your sport it's the same thing because you have the same challenges it's right? exactly yeah. you know and and i think you know i've been very fortunate to some able-bodied and disabled and for me a race is a race you go in and you completely race and you know the minister um for Kilim Balula came and he came to watch one of the races and i think he saw a lot of the the severely disabled athletes and to understand that i think you know someone said to me today that it was they're just basically a blob on land and when mm. you get into the water mm. you mm. see them use hydrodynamics and move within that water just with the head the speed at which they hit the time board with their head is unbelievable you know someone would have concussion i think i would probably have concussion but mm. 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 they're unbelievable and they get up there and fight life as much as possible and and make something of it and you know in return they might also feel amazing within that water so you know, from that perspective, there was that human touch. And that human touch within sport was, was fantastic. It wasn't a rule that we had to stick to. And that what made, that's what made the money even more special, was that it was due to that human touch that someone could change the regulations. Mm. And now that, that, in fact, they are giving you guys sort of equal money, the, the, <laughs> you're, you're fine with that? I mean, you should be fine, but the, do you understand that? Oh, definitely. You know, I think as an athlete, I don't think you'll ever question getting money. <laughs> mm, mm. And uh, obviously it will go a long way. Um, you know, put it in a trust, um, I pay off some debts that I had training over in Italy and things like that. So, you know, obviously it is it is something that I'm very, very grateful for. And I think also to partly pay the team. You know, we got money for the coaches, we got money for the team. And, and that's what it's about. It's about saying thank you. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I actually won the last medal, mm -hmm. um, as I was walking out, I actually said to the girls, I'm going to walk in the opposite direction and you guys <laughs> carry on with the ceremony. And um, one of the ladies who was handing out the medals or just behind us in the purple outfit, um, I said to her, I'm going to go over there. She said, no, you can't. I said, no, no, please. I really need to because it was my last race. It was to share it with the team, um, you know, to hand over the flowers. Mm -hmm. And that was what important. They got me there. It wasn't just me. And to say, you know, to say thank you for that was special. Mm. How would you, to go back then to the, the day that, without getting into details, because it's been well documented, people can just Google it anyway. But w when you knew you had lost your leg, um, how, at that point, how, how did you feel keeping in mind that you were already going to be an Olympic contender, right? Your, your, your results or your times were good enough already at that age. You were, what, 14 years old? I was, uh, to, I had my accident in 2001. I was mm. 17. And, 17, And okay. the year before mm. that, I actually missed out on the Olympics by 0 0.06 right. in one of my events, okay. which is six split seconds. And mm. in the two others, um, one was one point zero two. Uh, sorry, point uh, two zero of a second and the other one a bit more but from that perspective you know you're always a bit uh, would be a bit of a letdown but I think going from there um, having a motorbike accident swimming was all I knew it was my life it was you know everything I did it was all the people I knew and so there wasn't a question about not swimming and uh, you know I was just going to get into the pool and see what I could do what would happen obviously a dream would go to the able-bodied Olympics mm -hmm. but it didn't mean that I was you know turning down disabled at all and, um, you know, from that perspective, from swimming, I learned all my, my skills. I've learned, well, most of my skills, most of my values, most of, you know, my touring happened because of swimming. Yes, indeed. And mm. I mean, I now mm. I look back and I think, you know, am I ever going to go overseas again because my swimming career is finished? <laughs> but I think from that perspective, swimming was everything. And there was no question about, am I going to get back in? Am I not going to get back in? Um, I never said I would be a medalist. I never said anything along those lines. But my my you know my sport grew and I grew within mm, the sport mm. and that's how I got better and better and it was about dreams and goals I'd set for myself and and moved on with but those. I also understand when, when your when your friends came to visit you in, in the hospital uh, for the first time obviously sympathized with the fact I mean they knew what it meant as a, as a as a person as anybody losing their leg what it means to themselves but in your case where your career depends on that 
potential career, right? It's it's a, it's a yeah. double whammy that one there. But but I believe the story truth is sort of you threw open the blanket or the sheet <laughs> and say just look at me and get them a shock of their lives. I think that's how I've basically coped with life as well. You know, I don't have a cover of my leg. It's it's something that everybody can see. It's happened. This is who I am. And at the end of the day, you know, yes, everyone was in shock. Nobody knew how to treat me, and I didn't know how mm. to treat it either. So mm. it was just to go with it and, and see what, what would happen. You know, we obviously tried everything. You know, I put hours into the swimming pool that I don't think half the people have done or, or would do. Um, and it was just something that I'd set and something that I wanted to do and wanted to achieve and was willing to give everything. I sacrificed studying, sacrificed working to be able to be the best that I can be. And that was what was amazing was the team has done just that as well. You know, from the sponsors, they, they sponsor me, they've given basically time, effort. And from that perspective, it's been very special. Okay, now, now often people say, when they have an accident, it becomes life-changing and they, they grow bigger in other ways. And they say with hindsight, it's like amongst the best things that ever happened to them in their lives. Now, if I told that to you, are you going to say you must be crazy? <laughs> no, not at all. I think I, got, I became bigger as well and that in size. Mm. And that was purely because of a lot of medicine that I was on. But, um, you know, life did change. And I, I look back and I think it is the best thing that, that did happen to me um, or that has happened. And at some stages, obviously, you know, I would sit here and think, I wish I did have my other leg. But at the end of the day, mm, I don't. Mm. And it's to move on from there. And as I said, you know, I look up to people, you know, who you meet along the street. You look up to, I look up to everybody. And it's about learning lessons from, you know, people that you look up to and people, you know, you might look at someone and go, I don't want to be like that at all. So, you know, that's what my accident has taught me. Um, the way that people have reacted to me, the pe positive, negative and, you know, you grow from that. And, and I've, I've really grown as a person okay. since my accident. I said when I asked you away from sport, how you can use the disability aspect to sort of teach South Africans about how they need to handle other people with disabilities. I'll get to the callers again. 0891-104207. Natalie Dutour, who was, uh, who was a champion, competed in the Olympics as well as at the Paralympics, but not this time around, of course, but certainly one of the most celebrated athletes in this country. No question about that is in the spotlight. Ruben in Pretoria, hi. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Akira? I'm good, man. How's it, Ruben? I'm fine, and my regards to Natalie. Uh, na uh, Natalie, she's uh, just an inspiration to all of us as South Africans. And uh, you know, when I, I was watching the TV while she was swimming in London, sometimes tears of joy came, and then that braveness in her, and then that belief in her. That is what makes me to feel more South African, you know. And then I'm very proud. And we knew, even before she even traveled there, that she's going to bring back the gold medal. I'm very proud of her despite her disability. But one thing for sure that I just want to encourage her is that she has to take a role in, in terms of going up there into the young disabled South African who doesn't believe more in themselves whereby they, cannot, whereby they think they're not able to achieve anything in life. I think she, she has got in capabilities and enough mind to go and educate them in the remote areas, the rural areas, in the, every part of this country, so that most of those disabled young children can become like them. And the one thing that she must just know is that whatever that she, where she was in London, we are behind her in on our television, we are listening in the radios, and we know that she's uh, just a, a woman, more than a woman in this country. Mm -hmm. She's a mother for all, and then I'm proud of her. As she's retiring, I wish her all the best in her career, and then I hope that she might find something that can able to uh, 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 to make her to live longer. Okay, Thank Ruben, much, Ruben got that indeed. Thanks for that uh, call, Ruben. Certainly speaking from the heart, you can respond to him in just a minute, not for now. Uh, but some other mother of the nation <laughs> comes through in terms of the responsibilities you have. Uh, right, I'll probably have time for maybe two more callers, so we can do that. If you call in now, I'll take it after we get to the. Uh, Right, uh, Natalie, to with me in the spotlight. Some of the SMSs we've had. Natalie, you're a star. May God. Uh, my God will bless you, rather. You are a strong woman. Uh, another one, Natalie, you are an inspiration to our nation. I wish to congratulate you uh, for the work job well done. That comes from Asaria. I've got that right. Uh, uh, Mataboche. Uh, another one, I look forward to reading Natalie's book. Hope she's working on it. Maybe she will shed more light on the politics there. Well, of course she will. Otherwise, nobody's going to buy it. Anyway, it comes from Dr. M in PE. Let's talk about the book. I mean, when is this? When is the autobiography coming out? <laughs> I think uh, the first one we actually brought out so that, you know, before I qualified for the Olympic Games mm, and mm. it's all sold out and nothing has been in reprint, so you can't actually find it. But I think... I, I really, for this book, you know, to bring it out, I think it has to be a positive story. Mm -hmm. it, it also needs to, all the information needs to come out. 
and just make a positive influence through it. You know, I don't, I don't want people to sit back and go, oh, shame or, um, you know, if only or, or anything like that. It's to, to use it and to move on. So, um, but but it's, in the, it's in the pipeline. It's been planned. Well, I think I think one day, yes. I don't okay. think, you know, within the next three months, six months, I don't think so. But, you know, but after that, I think, yes. Um, that was the idea of getting the first book over and done with before the Olympic Games. And then the other one would be, you know, after the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it will just be the, the last four or five years. So from that way, it would be special to bring out another book and, and put an end to a story. Um, but, you know, so far as that goes, I think, you know, be it politics or be it not, at the end of the day, you know, I retire from swimming and I believe that you're not always the best person out there. There's someone that must come through and beat you, break your break your world records, break mm, your records. Mm, mm, mm. And that's how life works. And, um, you know, as I said, I've achieved everything that I wanted to. The next person will have different dreams and different goals. And, and that's what's important. And what would you title that book? <laughs> Is it too early to tell? <laughs> I have no idea. I think at the moment, you know, I'm very, very emotional and, and I've I've got to divorce myself from that part of it mm. before I can see the bigger picture. Um, you know, at the beginning it was seeing the bigger picture and just got more and more frustrated. So from that perspective, I think to look at it from outside of swimming, from, from an, another perspective, you know, I'm not the only one that has been through it. There's been a few people around me that have been through the same story. So, um, and, and, you know, it's been tough. Indeed. Okay, let me pick your brain on other things. Uh, let me complete the sentence. I I love it when South Africans do what? But uh, when when uh, instead of do, I'd say when South Africans support us. Mm, just support you guys. Support okay. us. Yes. You know we have a bit of a and, culture and, and, where when we don't win gold medals, then we're not South African. We have okay. a bit of that culture. Do you get so that sense? I, I do. I mean, you, not with swimming, but with <laughs> rugby or cricket or soccer. You know, it's you know, no, we're not South African. You know, but uh, okay. I think from that perspective, it's to go with go with your dreams, go with your goals, go with the teams that you support. Mm. And and I, I hate it when South Africans. Sure, I, I suppose um, that's a difficult. And don't one. say don't support us because that's like the flip no, side. No, that's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's a difficult one. I think. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, as South Africans, I would probably use people as incompetence rather than mm -hmm. South Africa, um, and you know, I think it probably says a lot saying mm -hmm. incompetence. Mm -hmm. When when we watch the Olympic Games. Um, you know, Chad Leclerc crying. I mean, obviously you were emotional at the end. I think understandably so. It was your, it was your finale, right? But, but not just the, the Paralympics, but in all the, the races that you swam, you know, um, swam in over the years, when you, when you stand on that podium, how much of it is, is you and, and how much of it is like, it's for my country? Um, I mean, uh, give us an insight into that. Because, you know, we obviously hope you connect with the country, but I can understand that you have to deliver for yourself. For sure. I think, you know, walking out there, I'm always talking to everybody else and we meet the people that actually hand out the medals. So mm. we'd greet them and we'd walk out. And I think standing on the podium before the medal is about, does my tracksuit look okay? It's shrunk a mm, bit in the mm, wash. Mm. The sheaves, <laughs> sleeves are a bit short. You know, is my top down enough so that nobody can okay, see anything? Yeah. And then I think once the flag plays, it's a proudly South African. It's for the country. You see the crowds, you see the flags waving in the stands. And that's something that is South African and mine at mm. the same time. And that's, it's, I don't think I've ever separated those mm. um, at, a, at a medal ceremony. And, in and the race, it's a bit different, but you know, in, at a ceremony in the race, it's for you, everybody. Right? I mean, you need to do that for yourself, yeah. Exactly, it's what you've done, how you've prepared, that all comes into the race with you. So, so but on the podium, it's, it's definitely everyone at once. Okay, I did say often, we hardly see a politician when, when he or she does superbly in a in certain job, sort of race to, to pick up a, a flag and say, I want to celebrate and do a lap of honor. It doesn't happen in politics, but it certainly happens in in sport uh, itself. What, what about uh, the on the issue of disability? I mean, the fact in a weirdest discussion last week, and we're probably going to pick it up next week in terms of away from sport. Since South Africans celebrate so much of the, the disabled athletes and their achievements, right? Do you find the same people then celebrate disabled people in in everyday life away from the Olympic Games, or in fact, are people harsher? That means what they do is they they celebrate you guys because you guys are winners, as you said. Yeah. But then in day to day life, it's like, oh, look at this person. You know, he's crippled or she's crippled, or she's like, just disregard her. You know, that type of thing. What, what are your thoughts? You know, I think um, you go through a lot of countries within the world, and some of them completely block out disabled people. For instance, the Chinas. Um, mm. You know, they hide their, their disabled at, or children or, or people. Um, and I think, you know, coming to South Africa, our culture looks at, looks at other, I think we look at each other and say, you're worse off than me, so I should be able to do this or I should be able to achieve this. 
And that's something that's quite special. Um, you know, as an, as an amputee, sometimes you would book a, a room in a hotel and someone would give you a disabled room. Okay. And as an amputee, sometimes it's the worst thing ever because you get this yes. bathroom with a tiled floor and trying to hop on a tiled floor is quite dangerous okay. when you're wet. Yes. So I think, you know, as life goes on, um, as the years are going on, it's definitely making room for more disabled people and more disabled access. You know, according to the soccer that we had within the Soccer World Cup that came to South Africa, you know, those things opened a platform for more disabled people. And I think the more disabled people have goals and dreams that they set for themselves and come out and, you know, they, there's nothing wrong with their brain. Mm -hmm. They might mm -hmm. be a bit disabled, but, you know, they're still good. They're still clever. You know, they can also work out there. They can also improve. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their own personality. So how, how would you like to be treated? I, I don't mean the swimmer. So just, just <laughs> remove Natalie to treat the swimmer. That's a different person, okay? The, the person who's disabled, who's, who's, who's had an amputation, uh, and, and there are thousands like you, and we know that, right? Yeah. How, how, how do you think we who don't have the issues how, how should we treat you guys you know it's such a difficult thing to say and I think only once you've actually been with a disabled person will you understand you know for me it's about I think I can do most of the able-bodied things things like walking underground and walking upstairs I'm a lot slower and everybody always leaves me behind because I can't walk as fast as them up the stairs mm, mm, mm. so yes there I would be treated something different um, for a disabled person you won't go and say can I help you you'll wait for them to maybe not be able to do it and or for them to ask you if you know you would help them or after a while if you've seen them sort of drop something drop something drop something then go, you know can you i please help you so, so it mustn't be the other way around where i would see someone like yourself and say oh shame we're disabled let me help you it, you know yeah. when obviously that person is aware that he or she can do 90 percent of things others can do anyway you know, so you always sort of respond to see where they need help. They would ask, right? Exactly. You know, we find ways to do mm. things. You know, in swimming, I don't swim with an aid. I swim without one. And I found ways in which to swim breaststroke without it instead of swimming in a circle because as you close your legs, you expel the water and it pushes you forwards as the water is being expelled. But with one leg, I, I can't really use it because I'll go around in a circle. Mm, so mm, mm. I ended up not really using it. And in that manner, we find ways to do things. You find ways to walk with the crutches or walk mm, with the prosthetic mm, leg. And there are certain things that you won't be able to do as an amputee, but generally most of the things you'll be able to do. You know, our chef, the Michelin of our team has, has no arms. And um, the one is, is tiny, but he would go into a dining hall and he would take a tray and hold with this tiny stump, he would hold a tray of, you know, everyone's food. And, really, and yeah. that is things yeah. that you see when you're traveling. And, and that's the opportunity to see disabled people other than, than what you're exposed to back home. But from that perspective, wait till someone asks you. Um, don't just help them. I mean, I'll give you a story. Um, we have a, a boy in our squad, Tyg Slattery, and we were in the dining mm -hmm. hall and he's in a wheelchair and he's carrying his tray. But every time he tries to wheel the left wheel, he goes right. So he has to pass the tray to the left hand and wheel the right wheel. And as I pushed him, he fell completely backwards. And I felt like an absolute idiot. And milk went flying and cereal oh, went goodness, flying. Yeah. And again, he would have asked for help. I didn't So you didn't help know him. his system, yes. Well, you know, I yeah. do. But yeah. I thought I'd do a good, I do, thought I'd do a favor. And at the end of the day, I felt like the idiot because everything went flying. And so it's a small lesson. You know, he wouldn't shout at me. But at the end of the day, you know, wait till someone asks okay. before very, you help. Very good lesson. You'd wait for people to respond. Some of the uh, some of the uh, Facebook comments I've had. Let me just run through a couple in in one go. Um, Innocent saying, "Hi, Ashra. Firstly, I'd like to say to her congratulations for making herself and the country proud uh, for the Paralympics." Could you please ask her why she decided to call it a day? Okay, you've answered that already. Anyway, uh, Oscar said that did she did she know she's the reason? Me and other South Africans started watching the Paralympics. That's interesting. Uh, and with a name like Oscar, he should tell us that when I heard Natalie Tutoy won this, Natalie Tutoy that, I asked myself, who's this? And there's more that uh, Oscar has to say. Uh, Mbekisa is saying, Ashraf, uh, thanks. Please ask her, what are her future plans now that she's retiring? Uh, are there any community programs she's involved with? Okay, specific program, community stuff? Yeah, I think um, I've, I've actually been with um, the Labners. Um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bertie Labner and his mm -hmm. family have been doing amazing work out there. You know, Mark Labner's got the Smile Foundation. Um, Bertie Labner's got the Reach, um, the Sabrina Ocean Love Challenge. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those are fantastic charities that, that I'm involved in. I used to do the Robin Island Swim to raise funds for Vista Nova School um, that I haven't done in the past two years. But from that perspective, you know, we try and give. We've done some work within Soweto. 
Um, at the moment, it's it's a bit quiet, but I think, you know, I'd love to give back, give back more to communities um, and, and to find projects that, that you, you can make a difference. You know, sometimes it mm. isn't about money, but it's about going in there and, and giving off time and giving off effort. And, okay. Two, yeah. two minutes is what we have. So let me rush through a couple of things. So if you have lunch with the president, President Zuma, what would you what would you put on the agenda? <laughs> I think, um, you know, definitely that, that uh, how can I explain it? Personal things wouldn't come into play that, you know, sport is sport. And we've mm. got to go out there and, and do the best for every sporting athlete around. Mm. And, and who would you like to have lunch with? Of anybody in the whole world? Leaving aside Madiba, because maybe you've met him already. <laughs> but, but, you know, everybody's done it. Who would you like to meet? You know, I think... Um, I wouldn't really name one person. I think every person that I've met has made a difference in my life. And um, be it the person in the street, be it, you know, the the president, be it the queen, be it, Mm, you know, mm. your friend uh, in the street. Um, I think from that perspective, you can learn from everyone. And it's not about just one person giving you information. It's about learning every day, every moment. And that's that's something that I would do. Mm. Is is there a book you could recommend we read? (laughs) Besides your your stuff, you know. (laughs) I think, um, you know, I enjoy fantasy, so I don't think I can give you too many books to, to go out there and read. But it's important for me, I pick up life stories and everything. And actually, the movie Cars was probably one of the Cars, yeah. Cars okay. was one of the most amazing things for me. And it was the, the old the old track or the old car had retired, but the youngster came in and wanted to learn so much from him after he wanted to forget everything. And I think it's a, a big lesson to learn in life. And um yeah, it's something that, that, that hits home. Indeed. Okay, we've got the last thing. What, maybe share with us an anecdote that, that you think just best sums up your, your entire life. It's been a tough life, and I've met people, amazing people along the way, and it's it's about dreams, it's about goals, it's about fighting, it's about not giving up when people um, have personal grudges against you, when people want you to fail. That's when you have to come back and beat them. And that's something that is tough. It's very, very tough to do. And you sometimes sit at home and think, why me? But go out there and and be positive and show them that it is possible. Indeed. Well, it's great chatting to you. And I'm sure we'll hopefully talk lots more in the future. Natalie Dutour, thanks for allowing us to put you in the spotlight. You do know next to the name Natalie Dutour will be the name champion or, uh, you know, because you are that. You're a winner or a champion. Either way, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, It's very, very appropriate. Thanks for for being here. Thank you to everyone for the support. It's been absolutely fantastic. I have a feeling this, this, this journey has only just begun. So just watch out for her. 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 So just...